Unfortunately, the weather isn't being kind to these teams here in Croke Park, and for the second time in recent weeks, it's raining heavily. Not quite as bad as the day of the semi-finals two weeks ago, but raining steadily since about two o'clock, so the fans have deserted the terraces and they've taken shelter from the downpour in the stands. And there's a major reconstruction being carried out on the downside since the semi-final. Ned King returns to where the number 22 has right corner back, and Brendan McGovern's brought in also to play in the defence, and he's the number seven. And in the rearranged attack, Ambrose Rogers is called in to play at the number 14 position. Consequently, Greg Blaney moves out to the full forward berth and is playing at left half today. And ironically, this down forward playing in this final against Armagh, the county with which his father, Sean, won an All-Ireland minor medal in 1949. Armagh relieved to see Mickey MacDonald out there in the number 15 orange jersey after the threats during the week that he'd be prevented from playing in this final. 13 of these players figured in the All-Ireland semi-final here last August, but some of them in changed positions now. Joey Donnelly, corner back then, is now the number 7. Noel Marley, a half-back in that championship match, is now one of the midfielders. And Brian Canavan, of course, at right half-back after a spell last summer on the half-forward line. It's another most unpleasant day that these teams have to face in Croke Park. Down in the dark shorts, playing to the goal and now right, but it's Armagh straight away from the throw-in, and they get a free. Mickey MacDonald, the danger man in the number 15 jersey there. He'd been fouled, but that's a free in the first couple of seconds. And a chance then for Johnny Corbin. Their ace free taker is just inside the 45-metre line, about 40 metres out, dead straight in front of the post. He's playing against... A stiffish wind coming up now at an angle. Could it be the first score? Johnny Corbin has opened the scoring in just 32 seconds. So a good start for Armagh, down defence will want to be nervous of fouling because Johnny Corbin is such a sharpshooter. Down on the attack now, this is Ambrose Rogers, couldn't get to it. The foot of Jim McCarr gets it away. This is Fran McMahon getting it from his midfield partner. Now Johnny Corbin cutting way over on towards the sideline. That's a free in. The referee, Wishy Fogarty, way over there, spotting the foul. So the down defence quite anxious. Johnny Corbin now with a very difficult angle. The 13-metre line, but maybe it's made for a left footer. That's the second point. That's magnificent shooting by the corner forward. Exactly two minutes, and Johnny Corbin has got two points from freeze for Armagh, so Down must now beware of fouling in that defence. Liam Austin gets a fist to that, knocks it down, but it's Joe Murphy for Armagh. Donald Bell, the number 11 alongside him, that's another foul. The free to Armagh, so three frees in these early minutes are three frees too many let's hope this is not going to be the pattern of this National League final that's the 45 metre line 
that the ball is placed on. Now could Johnny Corvin add a third? He's at a left angle. It's going out to the left, still in play, kept back in play. This is Ned King for down. That'll be a sideline kick for Armagh. Mickey McDonald here. So the controversial figure playing left corner forward. Cross Joe Kernan, Johnny Murphy, or Johnny Corbin. He's really been taken out of the game, and the referee will want to award with the man who did it. Centre half back Paddy O'Rourke. And Paddy just couldn't afford to be put off, as nobody could, but particularly Paddy O'Rourke, because he's supposed to be travelling to the United States next Friday. Johnny Corbin in quite a kickable position for this one and this will be his third point three points to Arma and three points to Johnny Corbin here and really it's lunacy if down defenders continue fouling like this to finish it into the net but the referee deciding that it's a free out Brian obviously in there before the ball arrived John McAlevey the goalkeeper with the free John having played in the semi-finals for the injured Pat Donnan stays on today Paddy Moriarty here for Armagh. It's all Armagh so far. Tommy McGovern on his own. Out to Ned King. This is Donald Bell. Can down now work something up. One number 11 pushed in the back by the other. Joe Kernan, the offender. Quickly taken. Liam Austin. This is Ambrose Rogers. It's the full forward. Cut off by Kieran McNally. Brand McMahon here. That's nice work by Sean Devlin. Sean on his own. Paddy O'Rourke closing in on him now. Sean Devlin with the shot. And he's got the point. That was a quick flowing movement by Arma. And the left half forward here was about 25 metres out. And he gets their fourth point. John McCartan far down. Liam Austin alongside him. Liam is the one on the ground. The number five is Brian Kahneman. That's a three. Two goals and 14 points in this National League. Can he add another point now? He does. Centre half forward getting it. Four points to one. 
and four of those five points now have been scored from frees in this final. Noel Marley, pass back to Kieran McNally. That's meant for Mickey McDonald. It gets to the corner forward. Inside him is Joe Kernan. Pa Tommy McGovern and got a boot to it, but there's a foul on Brendan on Paddy O'Rourke here and the free out. Despite the gloomy day in Croke Park, there's a tremendous amount of noise from the supporters. Liam Austin getting a fist to that. Paddy Kennedy here. Mick Michael Linden gone over the sideline. It'll be Armas kick. Kieran McNally left cornerback for Armas. Joey Donnelly to take the sideline kick. This is for Joe Murphy, the number 10. He has switched with Sean Devlin. They started not on their programme positions. Joe Murphy here is left half forward. Sean Devlin is playing right half. Tactical move by Arma. It's Paddy Kennedy with the kick for down. Magnificent fielding by Kieran McNally and the left corner back coming away with it getting it way beyond midfield Tommy McGovern gets it away for down down are very uncertain and jittery so far 22 is Ned King he's one of the men who left out for the semi-final now Brian Canavan with the sideline kick for Armagh This is Paddy Kennedy. He was unmarked for the moment. Joey, Joe Murphy got his fingers to his attempted clearance. Greg Blaney now. Ambrose Rogers. Oh, that was nicely transferred to Michael Linden. Rogers is still inside. That's put off by Paddy Moriarty, and he gets it over the sideline. It'll be a line ball to down. But the passing movement broke down at the last moment. Quickly taken. Michael Linden to Brendan Toner. And that will be a kick out for Brian McAlinden of Armagh. Brendan Mason's delivery just at the corner of the large parallelogram. Michael Linden here. Trip, that'll be a free in inside. He's inside the 13 metre line. Wishy Fogarty here places the ball on that 13 metre line. Ambrose Rogers. It's a difficult angle. He's about 15, 16 metres in from the sideline. That's the angle that Ambrose has. Coming up with the kick now. It's quite low. Bounces away from Brian McAlinden, but it's got away by Paddy Moriarty. Comes to Liam Austin. Centre half back Paddy O'Rourke. John McCartan tried to get to it. Armas Moriarty. Then it's the left half back Joy Donnelly. Paddy O'Rourke, centre half back, overlapping. Way beyond midfield. Ambrose Rogers fingers to it. Paddy Moriarty coming away from the defence with it. Breaking to down. Paddy O'Rourke. Not too pleased that it's a free for Arma. <laughs> 
Joy Donnell is free. That's a foul on Paddy O'Rourke. Joe Kernan here, the centre half forward, about whom there were so many doubts earlier in the week. But the hamstring is okay. He did over half an hour of exercises when the team tugged out in Dublin last night. Liam Austin for down. Frank McMahon is the one beside him. That's Greg Blaney, and the number 10 is Joe Murphy. Greg Blaney shot. This is a dangerous one. Brian McAlinden keeps his eye on it. Gets it away out to his centre half back, and then Paddy Moriarty clearing it away to Noel Marley. Very quickly away by Arma. Greg Blaney 12 23 there, Brendan Toner. Oh, this comes to the unmarked Paddy Kennedy. Now Donald Bell for down. Finding Ambrose Rogers, that slippery ball bouncing out of his fingers. Joey Donnelly getting it away. Joe Kernan, Brian McGowan, the full forward. Joe Murphy here now for Arma. Mickey McDonald's on his left. He takes the shot. Oh, it was a bad one, but look at Mickey McDonald. Joe Murphy it was here, but Mickey McDonald was just away to his left. Still down, three points ahead. We're coming up to halfway through the first half. Parma, of course, three points ahead, four to one. And we're now halfway through the first half. Paddy Kennedy got his fist to that, and Paddy O'Rourke then gets it away for down. The left corner forward, Brendan Mason, and he gets away from Dennis Stevenson. Young Mason who scored the goal against Kildare, but not this time. Brendan Mason, remember the goal that shattered Kildare in the semi-final, putting that one wide. Brian McAlinden took a very short kick out to Joey Donnelly. He gives it to Fran McMahon in the middle of the field. Fran belting it away. This is Brian McGowan. Noel Marley here. The number seven is Brendan McGovern. And Noel Marley penalised for barging with the ball. The rain still coming down steadily, but the afternoon is brightening somewhat. This is Brian Canavan for Armagh. Sean Devlin now, knocked away from him by Brendan McGovern, got over the line, they're both appealing for it. As you can see, furious appeals, even by sideline mentors as well. But it's Brendan McGovern, one of the brothers in the Armagh, or the down defence. This is Ambrose Rogers. Shot right across the face of the goal mount. Michael Linden is there, so too is Kieran McNally. Ryan McAlinden's kick out. Paddy Kennedy is quite content to let it bounce over the line. Sideline kick, Paddy Kennedy anxious to take it to Ambrose Rogers. He's causing a little bit of disturbance in that Armagh defence. That's Michael Linden. Ambrose Rogers moving around quite subtly. Armagh clearing it away. That's Noel Marley getting the push in the back. Quite blatant foul. Hand up, a helping hand from referee Fogarty. Right half back, Brian Canavan. About 50 metres from his end line. Paddy O'Rourke for down, gets it away out of defence. 
That's the other number six, Paddy Murray Arty himself and Jim McCair making a mess of that or it was Kieran McNally. Ambrose Rogers, the goalkeeper is out. And this is Jim McCair. But Paddy Murray Arty and Kieran McNally made a mess of a collision. And Ambrose Rogers had the chance, but Brian McAlinden was smartly off his line. Down come again, Brendan McGovern. It's wide, but the referee is wagging a finger at a player way out in the middle of the field. It's Brian McGowan, the armour full forward, who's way down there in the defence. I'm sure the down fans thought that Ambrose Rogers, the 14 here, was through with that opportunity. But a good interception it was by the goalkeeper. Number 12 and number 7. 12 is Sean Devlin. And Sean will get his name into the book. So Sean's name going into the book. That's the first warning for him. Brendan Toner now, one of the midfielders for down with the free. And a mighty long one it is. Just a bit too long. Yes, it'll be a 45-meter kick going off an arm or hand. So another chance. Down settling more into the game now. Brendan Toner with the 45 meter kick. Just a little to the left of the center of the crossbar. But Brian gets the point. Magnificent kicking. He has the stiffish breeze behind him. It's now 4-2, to two and Armagh leading. Just gone over 20 minutes now, and Brendan Toner's point from the 45. Getting the second one for down. Armagh coming again, Johnny Corbin. Boat knocked away from him, and he's been tumbled. So the free in, Johnny Corbin, some trouble with an ankle. Johnny Corbin is okay, he'll take the free himself when he's satisfied that he has the ball settled to his satisfaction. This free is almost 50 metres out. Brendan Toner got fingers to it, that'll be a 45. That umpire is wrong, in fact, because right beside Johnny Corbin, Brendan Toner was got his fingers to the ball was so far away from the umpire though that he didn't see it now Brendan Toner for down fouled the free quickly to down not so quickly change of mind so Brendan McGovern comes in to take it 22 and a half minutes into the first half. Liam Austin knocking it on for down. Brendan Mason here. Brendan Mason with the point. There's only a point between them now. The left corner forward the score, closing the gap to one point.
still the heavy misty rain falls in Croke Park Brendan McGovern here now down have really settled down quite well in the last five minutes or so Brendan McGovern shot Brian McAlinden advances off his line to cut it off to Fran McMahon here the midfielder shot blocked by his immediate opponent Liam Austin Joey Donnelly is the taker. Taken away by Liam Austin, the big six-footer. And he's been fouled after kicking the ball, so the free will be taken out there where Dennis Stevenson has the ball. Rishi Fogarty spotted that. So perhaps 50, 60 metres up. Or maybe not quite so. But where the ball landed the free given to Down because Liam Austin was fouled after he got rid of the ball and it's Brendan Toner then from just inside 65 metres and a massively long one it is to Ambrose Rogers must be a goal it is what a goal So that's the penalty that Arma paid for the foul. Remember, Liam Austin was fouled after he kicked the ball. The free taken about 50 metres further up by Brendan Toner. He lands it into Ambrose Rogers. Ambrose comes down, turns, and it's in the back of the net. Joey Donnelly shot block. Donald Bell on the ground, the number 11. The sideline kick is to Arma. Joey Donnelly taking the flag and all with them. This is Paddy O'Rourke down really now, coming in with more of an impact. Greg Blaney here, Ambrose Rogers, their goal scorer. Brendan, Mc or Brendan Toner, the man who gave him the ball for the goal, but this time Brendan puts it wide. gets that away, Ambrose Rogers in the chase Jim McCarr on the ground the Armagh captain and fullback the referee Wishy Fogarty has been whistling at Brian McAlinden here that he wanted him to take the ball back a little, Brian stealing a metre or two Ambrose Rogers blocking down the shot, comes into the hands of Jim McCurr, that's Dennis Stevenson, he's right cornerback bounces away from the tackle Brian Canavan to Fran McMahon, the midfielder away covering in on him now, the shot from the midfielder, it's good point Fran McMahon was about 30 metres out, way over on the far sideline, and he drops that over the bar. The midfielder made a good run, and it was a long-distance angle point. Two minutes away from half time now. Brendan Toner, very safe catching then.
Brendan McGovern with the free. Paddy Moriarty here fouled by Donald Bell. Moriarty corner of your picture then. The longest serving player on this Armagh team. Brian McAlinden, the goalkeeper, coming out. He's about 26 metres out this free is. Against the wind and the driving rain. That was securely caught by Paddy O'Rourke. Ambrose Rogers bounces away from him. Paddy Moriarty gets it away. Brenda McGovern here for down. The clearance quickly from the left half. Greg Blaney now for down. A nice dummy then and a sidestep. Dennis Stevenson here changes his mind about passing. He's in some trouble now, but he, and then he's forced to kick it over the sideline. This is an opportunity for down, but Dennis Stevenson here was being harassed by the left corner man, Brendan Mason. So it's Donald Bell with the sideline kick. He wants to go back as far as possible even further if that wall wasn't there beautifully landed in the large parallelogram Ambrose Rogers tried to get it to Mickey Linden it comes away out Noel Marley here for Armagh oh he gives it to Paddy Kennedy that was given away to the down man Dennis Stevenson now here for Armagh he's been fouled the first half is over Wishy Fogarty bringing an interesting and exciting first half. Maybe not great football. It was too tough and tense between these two neighbours. But Down taking the lead in the 25th minute when this man, Ambrose Rogers, got the only goal of the first half. So we're set for an even more exciting second half with just the one point between them. Straight away though, Guishi Fogarty awarding a free to down. Brendan McGovern, they're now playing against the breeze that there is here in Cove Park. They're playing against the misty clinging rain as well. Brendan shot way over to the left, Greg Blaney. Ryan Canavan is the arm arm and Greg Blaney doing well then under pressure. Noel Marley getting it away to Fran McMahon. That's a foul by Donald Bell from behind, pushing Fran McMahon. Fran is injured. Trouble with his ankle, I'm afraid now. Moriarty takes the free. Fran McMahon is okay. This is Des McCoy. He played so well when brought in to the semi final. That's Johnny Corbin having been fouled. It's an opportunity now for Armagh to equalise. No doubt Johnny Corbin, the 13, will take the free himself. Just in cent inside 20 metres, as you can see, this is the equaliser. Yes! Johnny Corbin now with the fourth point from a free by, for him. The sixth one it is for Arma. catching that very securely for down and getting it away a good long delivery beyond midfield Brian Canavan knocks it away Paddy Moriarty here for Armagh but driving it over the sideline into that Cusick stand lower deck
Ned King then the right corner back with the sideline kick for Down. Donald Bell here bouncing off of one man and then the other. Ambrose Rogers, he's got it, he's got it inside. Oh, what a shot, it could have been a goal. Ambrose Rogers, it was. He went high for the ball with the fullback, Jimmy Kerr. He got inside, took the shot, and it was just centimetres over the crossbar. So the down supporters must have been so relieved that their selectors brought Ambrose Rogers back into this attack. Down Armagh now, Des McCoy inside for Brian McKeown, but John McAlevey is quickly off his lines. And then John Corman is penalised for the tackle on the goalkeeper. With just six points from the Armagh attack, and they've totaled 18 goals and 61 points in this National League for an average of over two goals and eight points but being closely policed now today by the down defenders now this is Sean Devlin back to Paddy Moriarty the centre half backs long delivery it beats both Tommy McGovern and Johnny Corbin Johnny Corbin has moved into full forward Brian McGowan has gone right corner Des McCoy but there was a foul on Brendan Toner the referee looked as if he was pointing the other way it is a free for Armagh in fact Armagh in their first National League final it's the fifth one for down one of the previous four down one three in 1960 62 and 68 today now they're just one point ahead Johnny Corbin way out about 50 metres Des McCoy going up for it, knocked away from him. Mark Turley, the down captain. Brendan McGovern recovered very well there, just as he was about to slide. But that's into the unmarked Noel Marley. He gets it away for Armagh. Brian McGowan here now. He's gone right corner forward. Almost from the corner flag, crossing right across the mouth of the goal mouth. Or the face of the goal mouth, and Ned King gets it away. Noel Marley from midfield. Johnny Corbin roaming way out now from the square. This is Brian McGowan, but he's outfielded by Ned King. Magnificent jumping by the cornerback. Noel Marley again from the middle of the field. He's been fouled. It's the free. Changes his mind. Paddy Moriarty wants to take it. The number seven just going out of picture is Joy Donnelly. Now Paddy Moriarty with the kick, which is about 60 metres out and at an angle. To the left of the large parallelogram. Frank McMahon in possession, but it was a foul. John McAlevey, the goalkeeper, will take the free. Almost from his end line, as you can see. And a long, long run up to it, he's taking. Jess McCoy, great jumping bit. The young substitute. That's just gone wide from way over on the far side from Mickey McDonald. Over your picture now is Mickey, but he was way near the sideline. The 
Armagh attack having an uncomfortable time now. The down defenders doing very well after some early hesitancy and a bit of rashness with fouling in the early minutes. They're covering off so well. None better than Paddy Kennedy here. Donald Bell then coming way out to catch that. Ambrose Rogers knocked away from him by Jim McCare. Rogers has time to recover. Greg Blaney is the number 12. Still Ambrose Rogers. That's good ball control. He's robbed now though. Brendan Toner gets it. Moves it away by Kieran McNally. Joe Murphy, the number 10, lets it dribble over the line. Des McCoy needs some attention. Des, who had a fine game in the semi-final when he replaced Joe Kernan, as he's done today. Big, strong, tall lad he is. He won't be 19 until the 30th of June. Father Sean Hegarty, the Armagh team manager, a little bit anxious now. Paddy Moriarty, the number six, who's been playing in this Armagh team since October 1970. Joey Donnelly Des McCoy is okay Joey Donnelly takes the sideline kick to Sean Devlin that one point between them still and again the down defenders cover off this is Paddy O'Rourke they settle down so quickly after uncertainty in the earlier minutes and none better than this man here Brendan McGovern one of the three who was disciplined that will be a three Sean Devlin unceremoniously knocking Brendan McGovern way over the line as he kicked the ball. Brendan McGovern here, the number seven. Remember, one of the three dropped for missing training for the semi final. Himself, Ned King, and Ambrose Rogers, and all three of them contributing significantly to this National League final. Brendan Toner now. The free was from where the ball landed after Brendan McGovern had kicked it. That's about 30 metres out. Into the hands of Greg Blaney, and Greg has got the point. One of the most promising young footballers in town in modern times, the son of a former Armagh minor. He adds a point for down. minutes into the second half the rain coming down even stronger the afternoon getting unpleasantly darkish in Croke Park now Greg Blaney for down these two northern sides plagued with miserable weather on their visits to Croke Park this is John McCartan oh he didn't see Ambrose Rogers inside him Joey Donnelly now takes it away 12 is Greg Blaney knocked on by Brian McGowan Put off by Ned King for down. The down men playing with marvellous determination now. This is Brendan Mason roaming way out from left corner. Dennis Stevenson fouls him. Brendan Mason takes that free very quickly. Donald Bell. This is Michael Linden crossed over from right corner, having trouble controlling it. And then he's pushed away, surely. Brendan Mason is 15. That ground is so slippery there. This is Liam Austin. The shot from the big midfielder right across the large parallelogram. Ambrose Rogers, but it bounces off his fingers into the hands of Joey Donnelly here. And then Joey is surely fouled by Donald Bell. now getting so dark in Croke Park that over the top of the Hill 16 wall I can see lights on outside in the streets of Drumcondra. This 
comes to Paddy Kennedy. Down coming away again, Brendan Mason, Donald Bell here. The centre half forward for Down, blocked by Joey Donnelly. Joey Donnelly getting it away. teaming down at Croke Park referee Fogarty taking the name of Donald Bell down centre half forward just coming up to 15 minutes in the second half Brian McGowan charging with the ball so the referee giving the free out fingers of John McMahon. Just gone over the 15 minutes now in the second half. Brendan Toner. Ambrose Rogers coming way out to steal that over the heads of everybody and then he blasts it away wide. Point lead. There are 23,340 people here at Croke Park, and on such a miserable day, that's well up to the 23,000 that saw the drawn game between two monster teams, Cork and Kerry and Killarney last year. But I can remember that day in Killarney was a day of sunshine. Sadly, it's not in this league final between the two northern teams. It's getting so dark now, it looks like a miserable November evening. And down coming away again, Liam Austin, their magnificent midfielder. That's going to break to Donald Bell or Ambrose Rogers. It's left to John McCartan. Then it's Mickey Linden, Michael Linden, and the goalkeeper, Michael Linden, gets to it. Michael Linden was the man with the shot. Brian Michael Linden, the goalkeeper, who clears it away. Joe Murphy robbed, the number 10 has now gone back to the fence because Dennis Stevenson has been replaced by Kieran McGurk so Armagh under pressure and anxious 22 is Ned King this is Kieran McGurk now, he's the sub in for Dennis Stevenson and Joe Murphy has gone to the cornerback position Noel Marley now for Armagh still Noel Marley, that's inside to Brian McGowan, Mickey McDonald rather, Mickey McDonald, the corner forward, both himself and Brian McGowan, tall, dark haired, mustachioed forward.
fielding by Des McCoy and he's been fouled an opportunity for Armagh to advance again just beyond midfield they are and just one point behind Armagh who've never beaten down in a final the only two finals they've played in before were the provincial final in Ulster down beat them in 61 and down beat them in 81 Paddy Moriarty now with the free about 60 metres out it is superb fielding by Liam Austin and he's been fouled so it's a free out to take the free when the sides last met on October the 24th last year in their divisional game in Uri it was a draw that's the free to down Brendan Toner obviously to take it so anxious that all his forwards midfielders and all should move up and why not with such a long long kick from the midfielder the foul by Kieran McNally the number four there reaching in over Donald Bell's back pushing him at the same time says the referee now Donald Bell 30 metres out about that's his angle. Could he put it over from there? Down, remember, a one point ahead. The centre half forward with this shot now. That's great scoring by the centre half forward. Fielder really dominating the middle of the field he is now in this second half John McCartan penalised for going too far I'm sure John is wondering why he had to evade and go through a couple of tackles but the referee right out on the spot and Paddy Moriarty to take the free from his own 45 metre line Sean Devlin drops it Paddy O'Rourke gets it away for down and Jonah Bell is unmarked now Ambrose Rogers, Brendan Mason puts in. Oh, Ambrose Rogers won't thank him for that. The ball so slippery as you can see. Michael Linden here, getting away nicely from Joe Murphy. This is Donald Bell now. The shot from Donald about 30 meters out. Brian Michael Linden has it covered, and Brian coming away off his lines. Mickey McDonald upset and beaten. Greg Blaney. But Jim McCarr is there. And Joy Donnelly too. Joy Donnelly getting it away out to the middle of the field. Paddy O'Rourke. John McCartan. Oh, the two defenders, Kieran McNally and Jim McCarr, making an awful mess of that colliding with each other and the umpire signalling that it had gone over the line Jim McCurr doesn't agree but the umpire is very definite that the two of them had knocked it over the line
referee now appealing to supporters who are throwing bottles in there at that umpire. The Armagh supporters, they're angry with the umpire, but he was right on the spot. Jim McCarr is now appealing to those supporters to cease from throwing it, bottles at the umpire. The Armagh captain, because he didn't help himself by his protestations against the umpire's decision. clear goal ahead 24 minutes into the second half down coming again Michael Linden here and the shot from him out a difficult angle it will go over wide Brian Michael Linden rushing out Just over five minutes to go now. Liam Austin gets a fist to it. Greg Blaney. Fran McMahon on the ground. That's Brian Canavan. The referee signalling that it's to be taken from there. It will be a free. The referee wants it brought back a bit. No, he wants Greg Blaney to come back a step or two. The free taken by Brian Canavan. Liam Austin is really dominating this second half around midfield. There he is again, the number eight. And he's been fouled by Brian McGowan. Now this is Mark Turley, the down captain way beyond midfield. That's Colin Harney who's just come in to the Armagh team instead of Brian McGoon. This is Brendan Mason. It's all down now. Brendan Mason trying to find Ambrose Rogers. He does. Off the upright and over the bar. What a lethal full forward Ambrose is. to Armagh but Ambrose Rogers really adding on the pressure piling on the pressure on Armagh now Paddy Moriarty can Armagh save this game in the last few minutes their first appearance in the National League final remember this is Paddy Kennedy the number 20 is Kieran McGurk Just about three minutes to go. The free to Armagh. Four points between them. Down, remember, National League champions in 1968. They beat Kildare then. In 62, they beat Dublin. In 60, they beat Cavan in the first final that there was between two Ulster teams. This is the second one today. And the first one between two teams from the six counties. appearing in this final after five defeats in semi-finals the free to Armagh this is Mickey McDonnell this is Mickey McDonnell still a great save by the goalkeeper Mickey McDonnell couldn't get the space to shoot that low shot for high in the net and John McAlevey was alert to it and converts it con diverts it over the bar for the point goal between them again but that could be just as important a save as any that John McAlevey has ever made just two minutes left now down with the goal advantage this is Noel Marley for Armagh 
Joan Marley getting the free. The electronic scoreboard giving us the score from Turles, but here in Crow Park, it's Armagh on the attack. Joey Donnelly, it's his, or Joe Murphy, rather. Shot got away by down. It'll be an Armagh sideline kick. One eight, two eight points. Three points between them. John Corbin takes it short to Fran McMahon. Back to John Corbin again. The shot from John Corbin. That's gone wide. Oh, really, the Armagh attack had been so subdued today by a magnificent defence. John Corbin, who'd been the top scorer in the National League with 5.24, just getting the points from Freeze, four of them in the first half. And that was when the down defence was so jittery. But they steadied up after about 10 minutes. Down, having such a tradition since they first emerged in the 60s of lifting their game in Crook Park. Just like this, Liam Austin putting them on the attack. Kieran McNally is there. He's robbed by Donald Bell. This is dangerous. Donald Bell into Mickey Linden. Oh, it was Michael Linden got the last touch. He couldn't control it properly. Now Ambrose Rogers out foraging on that far sideline. And Ambrose has been fouled. It'll be a free way over just up top of the picture there right hand side of your picture now the linesman telling the referee that there were two fouls so he threw it up between two of them Ambrose Rogers and Des McCoy the sub at half time in the armour attack he gets it he's been fouled already the crowd of down supporters coming down along the sideline from the Hogan stand under us they're anticipating their fourth National League title and they look well on the way to it now and it's all over down are the National League champions and look at their supporters down who won the National League in 1960 in the first ever National League final between two Ulster teams they now again win the National League title in the first National League final between two teams from the six counties. Such a long, long wait and these down supporters celebrating it out there. 1968, they've had to wait. They were beaten in the 1970 final. That's the only National League final they lost. That was to Mayo. But today they take on their neighbours from Armagh and the men in red and black. Take the title. Mark Turley, their magnificent captain here, trying to make his way to the dais on the Hogan stand to take the National League Cup. Meanwhile, the dejected Armagh players going away into that dressing room. Still no National League title for Armagh. Ambrose Rogers, the man who made such a difference. One save, one shot of his saved by Brian McAlinden in the 18th minute. Then in the 25th minute, he gets the goal that proves such a morale boost for his team and he played so magnificently all through the game at full forward. Big, powerful full forward. He made such an impact on this final.
Mark, this was one of the most confident displays by Down in recent times, was it? Uh, I think it was, Mick. Uh, it was a result of, of a lot of hard work. Uh, just and Our game came together on the day. That's what it's all about in, in all Ireland finals. I, I think you were a bit unsteady, maybe a bit nervous at the beginning. We were. Uh, after all the, the press and etc. that was given to these RMA forwards, uh, we were a little bit hesitant, I suppose. But once we got the game together, we never looked back. What was it that settled you down? Because the defence was magnificent uh, for three quarters of the game, particularly against those dangerous Arma forwards, as you said. They got very little freedom. Yeah. Uh, so it's very hard to pinpoint it. I think we started to get a bit of... Uh, we started to close down their half-back line, their midfield, and uh, our, the defence started to win a few balls, and we never we just went ahead from then. Your own half-back line was, was magnificent, wasn't it? Paddy Kennedy, Paddy O'Rourke and, and Brendan McGovern? Yes, uh, that's, the, that's the whole thing about the team at the moment. We, we can uh, switch it about if there's an injury here and there and, and uh, fill in. And the, the, the three of them were brilliant. There's three fantastic players. Well, now the time in 1960 that Down won the National League in the first uh, All Ulster final, you went on to win the All Ireland. What about this year? Uh, it's very hard to say, Mick. Uh, the enthusiasm is there, the, the, the incentive to do it is there, uh, and I think the, the, the quality of players are there as well, so um, we'll see. OK, Mark, thank you very much indeed. James, that was a reward for dedication and commitment, wasn't it? Oh, yes, I mean, the 30 players deserve every honour they get. They had a winter of hell, and I mean hell through two nights a week, some nights, two nights a week, but this makes it all worthwhile. What was the most pleasing thing about the victory for you? After 10 minutes, they started to do what they were told. And once they started to do that, it was all one-way traffic. Yeah, what were they not doing in the first half, or the first 10 minutes? They weren't marking where they were supposed to be marking. I mean, they were, letting, they were giving their, these two strikers that talked about that room. But once they started to mark them, and mark them the way they are told to mark them, they, they give no bar. And the danger signs were there early in the second quarter, when Ambrose Rogers got th broke through, and, and, and a magnificent shot was saved by Brian McElindon, the goalkeeper. That was signs that there was danger in your attack. Well, I thought after we scored our first point, it was all one-way traffic. I mean, our man were left in the game by our misses. I mean, the, the, the amount of precision we won at half-back and midfield was colossal in the game. I mean, I don't care how good a team you are. If you can't win the ball in the middle of the field and at half-back, you're in trouble. Yeah. And I thought our half-back line today was tremendous. And then particularly in the second half, Liam Austin was totally dominating the middle of the field. Well, I mean, our man had nobody to go with him, to jump with him, you know what I mean? I, I couldn't understand, I mean, they, they just let him go and jump away. I mean, you can't leave Liam to jump for his own one. And uh, the three players that were left out for the semi-final, they were absolutely magnificent today, the way they came back, not only the way they played, but, you know, the, the, their, their willingness to come back and play after. It must have been disappointing for them to be dropped for the semi-final. Well, I suppose it's disappointing, but, I mean, if you had been playing this past fortnight, you'd have seen the effort that everybody was making. The boys that had the places didn't want to lose them, and the boys that lost them wanted them back, and it made an awful difference in training. OK, James, well, congratulations to you again. Ambrose, tell us about that goal. Uh, well, I think it was a free kick from out about the 50, in around the 50, Benji Toner floated the ball, and Austin was rising for it, you know, and I just seemed to cut in across, and as it came down, I sort of seen a gap and a turn, and I just stuck it in, you know, a bit of luck. And of course, not too long before that, you nearly had another one, but for a great save by Brian McElindon. Well, maybe a great save, but maybe at that distance out, no way should he have had a chance, you know, I should have stuck it away. Was it your best display in the down colours? Well, it's not for me to say. I think, well, it was my best display. Which was your happiest, anyhow? Well, any time you won is always a happy time, you know. That's what you work for, to win. How disappointed were you when you and the others were left out of the semi-final team? Well, we were disappointed. You know, it's you vote maybe five, six months and you turn around and maybe for something that you've done yourself very stupid, you throw it all away. But today it makes it, you know, it makes it great. You know. Yet I think it was an indication of the determination, the spirit that's in this down panel, that you were back immediately into training and then, of course, uh, selected for today. Well, I would say it's one of the key things is, first of all, having reserves that you, you know, you can bring them on and that, you know, everybody's sort of in harmony together. You've got to all be pulling together, you know, and I would say...